Though inflation again hit its highest level in 40 years, I'm gonna talk about why I think it's gonna go even higher and just how high I think it will get. Also, learn why, my gosh, because of inflation, you actually need to earn your money twice today. Also, I'm gonna talk about why inflation is even more destructive to you and your family and society than you've ever realized before. Also, I'm gonna talk about something actionable, how you cannot just hedge yourself against inflation, but you can actually profit from inflation by positioning yourself the right way. By the end of this video, you are going to know all of this. Hi, I'm Keith Weinhold, this is GRE. Yes, the latest inflation figure is 7.9%. Let's just round it to 8%. So what that really means to you, that means if you earned a $1 bill and you put that in your wallet one year ago today, that same dollar, that greenback, only has 92 cents of purchasing power today if it just sat there and it continues to get eaten up by inflation. We have now had 10 straight months of inflation being elevated at a level of 5% plus. Yes, this inflation phenomenon at an elevated level could stretch on for longer than one of Vladimir Putin's tables. And understand that you can make the case that inflation is actually substantially higher than 7.9%. That's really just the level that the government will admit to. I've talked about that in other videos. Yes, virtually every type of consumer good that you can think of of got more expenses from vegetables to rent to airfare. In fact, let's take a look at this menu from McDonald's. This is from 1974. Yes, this 1974 McDonald's menu is really the effect of inflation. After you've seen it occur for nearly 50 years, which is really kind of what you're seeing here, you can see all those years that inflation was low, like how it had been 2% for a while, and all those times where inflation had been high, like it was in the mid and late 70s, and like it is now. This cumulative effect really adds up, yes, such that you can see here where you could have gotten a Big Mac and fries and a drink all for a dollar six from McDonald's back in 1974. So inflation is actually a stealthy thief unless you begin to look at the long-term effects of it. And in fact, it's become more of an overt thief today as it is all over the news and everyone notices it in the supermarket and at the gas pump and everywhere else. In fact, here's a chart of inflation's level each year for each of the past 10 years. You can see how it was at that low level around 2% for years until 2021 when we were brought supply shortages and they also ramped up the money printing and here into 2022 so far that year over year level is where it's at now 7.9% this year. Yeah, gasoline has really been sort of that billboard for higher prices, but other places that aren't so overt might be in an Amazon Prime subscription where the cost of that recently went from 119 bucks up to 139 bucks. That was the first increase since 2018. That's a 17% hike right there. And look, here's the problem. Now today, you effectively need to earn your money twice. The first time is when you earn your money at work, and the second time is when you need to take that money that you earned at work and invest it in an asset in order to meet or beat inflation. Yes, if you're a successful entrepreneur or lawyer or accountant or medical professional, whatever you do in that profession, that's just earning money the first time. You do need to go out and beat inflation, basically earning that money a second time now. You need to earn your money twice. And, you know, I think some people still think this way and they still sort of ask themselves a the question like, well, why can't I just work hard for 30 or 40 years? And during that time, I can store some of what I have earned during my 30 or 40 years, and then I can work off that stored, that savings. Well, it's because the store of value is broken with inflation. So instead, you need to get into assets. And you know what? I think a lot of investors, even during their life, they tend to forget this sort of thing. Let's say a year ago, you bought Starbucks stock for 100 bucks. And today, that Starbucks stock is still worth 100 bucks. Well, it actually declined in value, even though the price, the nominal price of that is the same because today your Starbucks stock is really only worth $92. If you bought it a year ago for $100, you're down, not even. 
So your $100 Starbucks stock from a year ago would need to be worth $108 today just to stay even. And you know, I think people in say Bitcoin, they forget about something like this too. If you bought Bitcoin a year ago for $50,000, it would need to be worth $54,000 today just to maintain the same prosperity for you. So your Bitcoin, if you bought it for 50K a year ago, it would need to be worth 54K today just to maintain purchasing power. And then of course the government also taxes you on that 4K capital gain if you sold your Bitcoin, which seems so wrong. That's a different topic unto itself. But you need to handily beat inflation and be aware of this. And understand too, we're predominantly real estate investors here, but inflation erodes away the prosperity that you have saved in your real estate equity just the same. So what's the formula there? Have less equity and more debt on your real estate if you want to make out with inflation. Hey, go ahead and put a like on this if you like a few of these concepts that I've given you here, if I'm giving you some food for thought, but I definitely have more for you here. I'd really appreciate the like. Higher energy prices are certainly on their way and they really haven't been baked into that 7.9% inflation number yet. I think we're gonna hit a 9% CPI inflation number by June. And why is that? Well, it's because war has been a pretty reliable precursor to inflation. Now, the United States is not directly involved in Russia's invasion of Ukraine, but in the past, war has constrained nation's productive capacities, and it's also disrupted supply chains, causing shortages and leading to more inflation. Even if you have the same amount of dollars chasing fewer goods, we have more dollars being created chasing fewer goods. Yes, is Russia and Ukraine's petroleum products and other commodities not being imported help stifle that supply chain? Another problem is that wages are not keeping up with inflation. When your wage doesn't keep up with inflation, that diminishes your quality of life. Now, look, I think you can look over the long term and say to yourself, well, my quality of life doesn't seem so bad. I still live in a good home with air conditioning. I still have the latest iPhone. We're still going on vacations. You know, my quality of life still seems pretty good. I don't exactly feel like I'm suffering. Understand this, when you have these long-term inflationary trends like we've had, which really accelerated when the dollar was de-pegged from the gold standard in 1971, understand this. Back in 1971, often only one parent had to work, either the mom or the dad. Today, both parents have to work just to maintain about the same standard of living that one had 50 years ago. Of course, there are technological advances during all that time, but think about it now. Just to maintain about a commensurate standard of living, you need to have both parents work rather than one. What's a huge contributor to that? It's when wages don't keep up with inflation. This is huge. This is inflation breaking down the very structure of the American nuclear family. So let's talk about solutions to this. You know, a lot of times with inflation, uh, people just complain about it, especially if their wages don't keep up proportionally. They complain every time they go to the supermarket to buy a pound of ground beef or they put gasoline in the car. They complain, but they don't really do a whole lot about it. They might lower their quality of life by driving fewer miles or eating lesser quality food or skipping a vacation. A lot of people don't take action and they continue to have their quality of of life diminish. So rather than complaining, I'm here about being actionable and shedding some light on how you can actually profit from inflation, not just hedge yourself against it. But a lot of people think in scarce ways and will lower the quality of life. As I like to say, the scarcity mentality is abundant and the abundance mentality is scarce. What you can do as an investor is position yourself in order to win the inflation triple crown. Now you might already be familiar with this, so let me just talk about one of the three legs of the inflation triple crown. You win the inflation triple crown when you buy a rental property that's tied to long-term fixed interest rate debt, and you don't need to be the property manager. I have property managers for every single one of my properties, but the first of three ways that you win with the inflation triple crown 
is with asset price inflation. Let's say you make a $20,000 down payment on a 100K property. And yes, there aren't very many 100K properties left out there, but this just scales up. So think proportionally here. All right, what happens to your 100K rental property when you have 10% inflation and the value of real estate only reflects that inflation? So after a year, it goes from 100K up to 110K. Now, you might be asking yourself, well, now, how in the heck would I be any better off? Because now I have 10% more dollars after a year, but every one of those dollars is worth 10% less. Aren't I right back where I started? And the answer is no. You're way ahead of where you started. Because with your $20,000 down payment and that 10K of inflation on the asset, your 20K down payment in equity just went up to 30K of down payment in equity. You just 5X inflation, you've got a 50% return on your down payment after one year. And you're like, well, wait, well, how did that happen? Leverage. It's because you got a 10% return on both your 20K down payment and the 80K that you borrowed from the bank. That return on the money you borrowed from the bank goes to you not the bank. You just 5x inflation because you're leveraged 5 to 1. That is just one of three ways that you benefit from the Inflation Triple Crown. If you haven't seen that important three video video series, the Inflation Triple Crown, I'll put that right up here for you. It's how you can be actionable and actually do something about this inflation, not only hedging yourself against it, but actually profiting from inflation. This is huge. I mean, this is having a strategy and a family plan for things that are transcendently important in your life. Maybe to you, that sort of goal is so that both parents don't have to work or whatever that is for you. But now you have a strategy and a durable way forward. Oftentimes, though, it can be difficult to find a property, especially now when the supply of properties is so low. I put together a resource for you at GREMarketplace.com where I connect you with a lot of the nation's best property providers for rental property that's conducive to just exactly this inflation triple crown strategy. What's conducive to the strategy? It's owning property in states. Usually it's not your home state. Often it's places in the Midwest and South that tend to have a high ratio of rent income in proportion to a low purchase price and they tend to be landlord-friendly states. A lot of these are single-family rentals. Some of them duplexes and larger, but a lot of them single-family rentals, 300K in price or less. A lot of times the higher price ones really don't generate that much more rent income in proportion to the extra money that you have to pay for them. I buy from these providers myself at GRE Marketplace. So log in and set up an account over there. It is completely free and you get access to all of the nationwide providers. That's at GRE Marketplace. Well, hey, if you learned something here about inflation and actually just how destructive it really is, go ahead and share this video with a friend. I'd really appreciate that and maybe they would too. I'm Keith Weinhold. Thanks for being here, but you weren't here for me. You were here for you. I'll see you in the next video.